Hi, I'm Mrs. Cohn here bringing you a video on the physics concept known as torque. A real simple introduction. Um, the fancy definition, a physics definition, is a force perpendicular to a given point applied at a radius from that point. The rotational equivalent of a linear force. That sounds like a mouthful. I'm going to try to break this down a little simpler. Um, the simple definition of torque, it's just a force that causes rotation around an axis. Think about a door. A door has hinges. If you push on the door, the door swings about the hinges, it's axis of rotation. So the um, torque is just any linear force that causes something to rotate. If I'm holding this pool cue right here and I were to hang something from it, it's gonna wanna rotate my hand. It's just a force that causes rotation. It's rotational force. And there is a video down here of a con internal combustion engine. Um, they do use torque. They turn linear forces into rotational forces. And it kind of shows you what an engine looks like on the inside and how it works. And it's a great, great video. It's only a few minutes long. I am going to link it for you to watch after this one. Um, please watch that video. So torque is the uh, perpendicular force times radial distance. That's the formula for it in words. Uh, torque, tau, the Greek letter tau, equals force times distance or radial distance. Um, so keep that in mind. A simple way to think of torque is just force times distance. It's rotational force. Um, of course, force is measured in newtons, and the radial distance or radius from the axis of rotation is measured in meters. So torque is going to have a unit of a newton times a meter or a newton meter. So that's simply torque, a force that causes uh, rotation. And there's two things we need to look at. Um, sometimes your force might not be per perpendicular to the axis of rotation, so we may have to incorporate a little bit of trig. That's where that sine theta comes in that formula on the right. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, though. Uh, I can't stop torquing about how hard it is to move in circles. So this is a funny meme, which hopefully when you understand torque a little bit better, you would get this meme. But please don't confuse torquing with torquing. They are two very different things. And now a little video on torque and how it works. All right, so here's a little demonstration of the concept of torque. I have a, oh, this is actually from a ring stand. It's just a metal rod and a bucket of bleach, but really a stick, a string, any mass would work. Um, so what I want to do is just show you torque. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to put it close to my hand. Now torque is force times distance. This bottle of bleach has the same weight no matter where I put it on the ring stand. Same mass, same weight going down, mass times gravity. Right here, it's a lot easier for me to hold up. Why? Well, even though it has the same force as over here, over here, it's much further away. Um, technically, the bleach wants to make my hand rotate downwards. My hand is the axis of rotation. So the further this is, the further the force is from my hand, the more torque it's generating. And this is something very simple you can do at home. Um, you can see this. Torque is force times distance. All right, you just watched the video on bleach and torque, and hopefully it helps you understand the concept of torque a little bit better. I am going to take you through a little math in each case because that was all qualitative, so this is going to be a little bit quantitative, but it's very, very simple stuff. We know that torque equals force times distance. Let's say we had some bleach, mass of 2 kilograms, which means it has a weight of 20 newtons. Remember, uh, weight is mass times gravity. Mass is 2. Gravity acceleration due to gravity is 10. So the weight is 20 newtons, and this object is one meter away from your hand. It's a full meter away. So how much torque does it generate? How much rotational force? Well, torque is force times distance or radial distance or the radius from the axis of rotation. So using force times distance, we know the force is 20 newtons. We know the R or the distance is one meter. 20 times one is of course 20. So you have 20 newton meters. Now what if I change this up? What if I move the bleach much, much closer? If I move the bleach all the way in here um, to 0.2 meters, now we know we are not gonna generate as much torque because the R value is gonna be much smaller. So torque again is force times distance. The bleach's mass or weight has not changed at all. It's still the same 20 newtons. The only thing that has changed is the R value. The bleach is now 0.2 meters from my hand instead of one. So 20 times 0.2 is gonna be four newtons, four newton meters. Um, so you're generating a lot less torque, a fifth the amount because it's uh, five times or a fifth the distance away. So keep that in mind. Torque is just force times distance and we can calculate it using that simple formula. So this kind of, in a way, gives us a mechanical advantage. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But let's look at this torque wrench. Um, you may have seen one of these wrenches or used one to tighten or untighten bolts to screw things in, unscrew them in the case of bolts. So you have here two cases. You have a very long wrench. 
which the person is grabbing it one meter from where they want to twist the bolt. And the person is also grabbing it two meters. They're only applying a force of 20 here, but they're applying a force of 10 here. This is two separate cases. Um, this is like, say I was using the wrench right here and I was trying to twist something and then I'm using the wrench right here. Um, which case is going to generate more torque? Um, well, if the forces were the same, I think you might realize now that the longer, the further you are, you are, the more torque you'll get, but these forces are different. So I do want you to calculate the torque in each case. What does increasing the length of a wrench or lever arm do? Um, so this is, do you get a difference in A and B? What if I made this even longer? What if I extended it all the way through the screen? Does a longer wrench uh, help you in any way? And what does a tire iron do? So please pause the video, think about these three questions, answer them, and then hit play. I'm going to give you the answers right now, so pause it if you didn't. All right, so in case A, the force is 20 newtons. They tell us that it's going straight down, a force of 20 newtons right here. Um, we also know that it is one meter away, and torque is force times distance. So 20 times 1 is 20, 20 newton meters. This one over here, um, B is a force of 10 newtons, but it's 2 meters away. They're using the longer end of the wrench. They're using the whole wrench. So B is 10 times 2, which is also 20. So in each case, you get the same amount of torque. But in case B, you only had to apply half the force. So I think that um, leads us to our answer to the question on the right. What does increasing the length of a lever arm do? Well, it allows you to get more torque for either the same force or allows you to get the same torque for less of a force. So you can apply a ton of torque to something if you have a very long lever arm, which brings us into our third question. What does a tire iron do? And if you've never seen a tire iron, it's one of these things you use it if you get a flat tire or a spare, you have to change your tire, you have to um, take the lug nuts off. It's, you know, tires have to be mounted onto a car pretty securely, so you have to tighten those bolts up very much. So there's no way you're going to use a little wrench or something to um, basically unscrew bolts on a tire. So you need to use a device that generates a lot of torque. Um, so keep that in mind. The long arm allows the same applied force to generate more torque or rotational force. And I did post an answer here. You can read that on the slide. Increasing the length of a wrench allows the same force to generate more torque by increasing radial distance. And a tire iron also looks like this, a tire iron jack. If you've ever, maybe you've never seen one of these, you've seen one of these. Um, so keep that in mind. Torque is a very useful concept. How might a farmer move a heavy stone? Well, we can utilize the principle of torque. Think about it, a crowbar or a pry bar. Um, torque is force times distance. You can only push down so hard on something. Eventually, you know, if you push harder than your body weight, you're gonna lift yourself up. So what you need to do to generate some extra force is use something very, very long, a long lever arm. And that's where crow or pry bars come from. Maybe they helped in pyramids. Maybe they helped a lot of our um, ancestors and ancient peoples move things and build things. And you can see that here. It helps you lift and move objects that you otherwise could not using your normal body weight or your normal strength. Um, increasing R will just give you more torque and give you a mechanical advantage. So torque is very useful in this regard. Okay, so here we have a wrench. And of course, we have a bolt up here. You either want to tighten it or untighten it. Uh, righty tighty, right? So if you're pushing this way, that's going to make the bolt turn counterclockwise. You are applying a torque to the system. Likewise, let's say you turned it a little bit, you still need to push in this direction. Um, you're always perpendicular to the axis of rotation to get a torque. No matter where it is, if you're still untightening it, you're pushing up. This is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. You're always going to be perpendicular to get maximum torque. Um, but there are some other cases. What if you had this and you decided to push straight up? Well, that's not going to cause any rotation. There's going to be no torque there. Um, torque is rotational force. Yeah, there's a force. You're pushing the bolt straight up, but you're not causing any rotation. You're not causing any torque. And likewise, what if you pushed your arm up at an angle? Well, you're going to get some torque now, but not all of that force is going towards rotating the wrench or rotating the bolt, unscrewing it. Um, in fact, you could break a force like this in the components using trigonometry, sine, cosine. And we did this with um, projectile motion and forces. Only this component, the blue component, would be giving you torque. The 
red component, remember your tail to tip vectors, would be giving you just a force upward that would lead to no torque. And that's where the sign comes in when you're dealing with uh, torque equals force times distance times sine theta. Same thing here, if we had our, our bleach and bar um, analogy. Well, if you're hanging something, the weight is going straight down, your force is perpendicular to the axis of rotation, which means sine of 90, perpendicular means 90 degrees, sine of 90 is one. So this whole term becomes a one, and your torque is just force times distance, or force times r. But if I were to push in, this is not perpendicular at all. This is actually zero degrees. It's 90 degrees away from perpendicular. So sine of zero is zero, and you would get no torque in this formula right here. Force times radius times sine of zero um, is zero. So your force times your radius, no matter what it is, there's no torque being generated. Torque is only rotational force. Doesn't mean there's not any force. So yes, certainly you're pushing it, but it's not going to cause it to rotate. Likewise, if you push at an angle here, um, only a component of your force is going straight down. And the only component generating torque is the red one in this image. So um, that's where the sine theta comes in um, when you're dealing with things. So just keep that in mind. We're not going to do too much with it, but if you ever see this in college or beyond, that's sine theta. Um, and I'm going to show you a little video of a door being opened. We're going to use a notebook to simulate it. Okay, so now we're going to talk about one other aspect of torque, um, and it's just opening a door. If you were to try to open a door um, close to the hinges, it's very, very difficult. And here I just have the same metal ring stand and a notebook so it can, of course, rotate around it. And this is going to model our door. So if I were to push this straight in, it obviously rotates or open like a door would. If I pushed it closer to the hinges, closer to the axis of rotation, well, I'm not generating as much torque, so it should be much harder to open it. And you can actually test this in your house. I recommend you go and go to a door and push it open very, very close to the edge and then very, very close to the hinges. I think your parents might wonder why you're standing there opening the door. They're probably going to think you lost your mind from uh, social distancing. But uh, do it. See it. See torque in action. And one other thing just to emphasize, if I push this way, I'm not getting any rotation. The force is not perpendicular to the axis of rotation, so I'm not generating any torque. Likewise, if I push at an angle, only a component of my push is being used to open the door. So again, the further you are away from the axis of rotation, the further you are away from the hinges, the more torque you're going to generate. And that is why it's much easier to open a door if you push further away from the hinges. All right, so you just watched a little video about a door opening. I have that same notebook here. Um, so in case A, I just want to analyze these images. We are up here at the top left. Um, if you were to push on the hinge of the door, the door, there's no rotation. The door is not going to rotate. You're pushing the actual hinge. If you push really, really far away in case B, we're on B now, um, you're going to get maximum torque. You're the maximum you could possibly be. If you were to push the door right in the middle, you're half the distance. You're only getting half the torque and if you push right at the end well again you're not getting any rotational force you're not pushing perpendicular to the axis of rotation um just to go back likewise if you push at an angle only a component of my force would be in the um, perpendicular direction so that's the concept of torque 